Hello, my name is Samantha Sagasser. I'm a fourth year medical student at Mayo Clinic Elk School of Medicine in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I wanna share with you today the work that I've been doing with Dr. Joanne Shen at Mayo Clinic Department of Ophthalmology in Arizona. So intense pulse light, or IPL for short, was first suggested as a therapeutic for ocular rosacea with bifolium gland disease and dry eye disease in 2002, when Dr. Melanda Toyas coincidentally observed improvement in dry eye signs and symptoms in his patients receiving IPL treatment for facial rejuvenation. Since then, IPL has emerged as a promising treatment for patients suffering from ocular rosacea with refractory dry eye. However, the mechanism by which IPL improves dry eye symptoms is not fully understood. Cytokine influence, as well as ocular microbiome changes, have both been suggested as potential mechanisms for IPL's efficacy. We designed a small pilot study with the purpose of assessing tear film, transforming growth factor beta, and ocular microbiome changes after intense pulse light with meibomian gland expression compared to meibomian gland expression alone in treating ocular rosacea with dry eye symptoms. So transforming growth factor beta, or TGF beta as we'll call it, was chosen for the study because of its previously demonstrated upregulation in skin after receiving IPL for acne vulgaris. No prior studies have examined changes to TGF beta or changes to the ocular microbiome after IPL treatment for ocular rosacea with dry eye. To conduct our study, um, we took 20 patients and randomly assigned them to receive IPL with MGX, so that's intense pulse light with my bulimian gland expression, or to receive MGX alone. Patients were examined, treated, and administered the Ocular Surface Disease Index, or OSBI, survey of dry eye symptoms every four to six weeks for four total treatments. The tear film and conjunctival samples were collected at first and last visits and analyzed for TGF beta concentration at Eve Technologies in Canada and for 16S ribosomal RNA amplicon sequencing of ocular microbiome at Arizona State University. Well, coxin rank sum and sign rank were used to examine changes from baseline. Ocular surface disease index surveys revealed significantly greater improvement in symptoms after IPL MGX compared to MGX alone, which is consistent with past research demonstrating IPL's superior efficacy in treating dry eye symptoms. There was no significant difference in mean TGF beta 1, 2, or 3 concentrations after IPL MGX, nor when compared to MGX alone, suggesting that TGF beta activity is not responsible for the efficacy of IPL. Quantities of Clostridium, Klebsiella, Brevibacterium, Lactobacillus, Neisseria streptococcus, Carinobacterium, Butyricoccus, and Actinomyces were significantly reduced from baseline in both treatment groups, but without a significant difference between the two groups. This could be from some antimicrobial effects of meibomian gland expression, or from the short course of antibiotic steroid drops that each patient completed after treatment which is explained in the IPL protocol that was developed by Rolando Toyas. In conclusion, IPL MGX improved dry eye symptoms for more, it improved dry eye symptoms more than MGX alone. IPL treatment offered no additional benefits though to MGX in decreasing virulent bacteria present on the ocular surface, um, nor did it influence TGF beta levels in tears. So prospective studies on IPL MGX with larger sample sizes are really needed to further investigate cytokines and microbiome with intense pulse light in patients suffering from ocular rosacea with dry eye symptoms. Thank you for your time.